Before I start, I would like to thank the Environment Society of Oman for the invitation to talk about our conservation work uh, on the Arabian leopard. I will give you a little bit background about leopard in general, about Arabian leopard in general, and then the threats to the Arabian leopard. And then I will move on to conservation actions in Oman and the results of uh, our leopard research in the Dufar Mountains. The Arabian leopard. The Arabian leopard is one of the recognized eight subspecies of leopards and is the smallest of all of them. Previous, previous morphological studies consider it closer to the, Afri to the Asian leopards, but uh, genetic studies using comprehensive samples from across the Arabian Peninsula find it actually as a unique and distinctive subspecies that diverged around 832,000 years ago. However, like the morphological studies, which consider the Arabian leopard closer to Asian leopards, the genetic study confirmed it as closer, or the African leopard subspecies is its closer relative. The distribution of the Arabian leopard. The Arabian leopard was once widespread throughout the mountainous region of Arabia, from Palestine in the north, throughout the, Saudi, the Hejaz and Asir Mountains, Saudi Arabia, down to South Yemen, and from Southern Yemen to Dufar Mountains in Oman, in Southern Oman, and then in the Hajar Mountains and UAE of, and the Hajar Mountains of North Oman and UAE. Uh, today, the Arabian leopard, the, these red lines on the map, it shows its historical range. It's today, however, it's today the only found in the Dufar Mountains of Southern Oman and in small pockets in Yemen, with the possibility of small individuals in Saudi Arabia. These black dots here shows the current range of the Arabian leopard in the, in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, the northern population uh, is considered now extinct. Uh, the IUCN state. Given its small population size, small and fragmented population size, the IUCN classified the Arabian leopard as critically endangered since 1996. Oman has sensed like the critical or the crucial states of the Arabian leopard 10, 20 years earlier, and it took some very important measures in favor of the leopard. I will tell you more about these measures later, but I will now talk to you more about the threats that facing the Arabian leopard. The Arabian leopard faces several threats. The killing of leopards due to livestock predation uh, is actually the main threat, especially outside Oman. For example, over 20 leopards or actually over 10 individual leopards were killed in Yemen and Saudi Arabia in the last few years especially due to livestock predation. These pictures you show in the screen, actually, the picture here on, from, uh, from uh, Saudi Arabia in 2014, and the picture to the right is from Yemen, also in the 2014-15. Loss of, prey, of natural prey species due to illegal hunting, also a threat to the Arabian leopard and its survival in the mountains. The loss of ibex and gazelles will force the leopard to rely more on livestock and for food, and that will increase the risk of uh, the risk of leopard uh, killing by local people. So, and also the leopard, the Arabian leopard population, like Bray base, is very small. So, losing any 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 one of these Bray species will put the leopard at a great risk. Loss of habitat. Loss of habitat, or most of the, actually the Arabian leopard habitat in the region has been either transferred or uh, transferred to human settlements or damaged and uh, cleared by uh, overgrazing livestock, especially. This is already casing the small population of the Arabian leopard uh, to be further fragmented and isolated. Storing and mining in, uh, in the leopard habitat is also a threat, not just disturbing the leopard, but also prevents gene flow and movement between 
the leopard's subpopulations in the Dufar Mountains. For example, having these quarries in some of the corridors is actually limiting leopards to move between the different mountain regions. And that will confirm later by genetic studies. So let me now talk to you more about what Oman has done uh, over the years to protect and conserve its leopards. In 1976, Oman sensed the, critical, the crucial states of the Arabian leopard, and to avoid its extinction in the wild, uh, it banned the hunting and killing of leopard and its prey species in Oman. That, of course, helped the Arabian leopard, the remaining Arabian leopard, to survive to what is we've seen today. Just a few, a few years, Oman launched the first captive breeding program of, a, of the Arabian leopard in the region from four leopards captured from Jabal Samhan Nature Reserve. The objective of this program was to ensure the existence of a living population if the, the wild Arabian leopard become extinct in the wild. However, the most important measure was taken in 1997 when Jabal Samhan, it's compromised Mirbat and Sadah and Shalim in the north. Following the declaration of Jabal Samhan as a protected area or nature reserve, a long-term research and conservation program for the Arabian leopard was launched. Most of our knowledge today about the Arabian leopard coming from the result of that program. And a special thank you to those people who initiated this project at the, at the first place or in the first place. Several important measures followed later on, including the employment of local rangers from the local communities that live alongside the Arabian leopard in the far mountains. The pictures here show some of our wildlife rangers from Dufar that working with us on the Arabian leopard doing uh, surveys in uh, the Najd area of Dufar. <laughs> These young guys are the future of leopard conservation in Oman. Following the employment of local people, Oman took a very important, I call, I, I consider it a very important step or a, a measure to, to establish actually a, compensa a compensation scheme for livestock predation. For example, those people that their livestock being killed by leopard they will report back to us instead of killing a leopard, they will report to our rangers unit and the rangers will go to these field sites investigating what's going on and putting camera traps. And if it's proof to these animals are or livestock being killed by leopard, they will get support and compensated for their livestock loss. And I think that is one of the important issues or important steps to address the killing of leopards and uh, let's say put it to the uh, hostile attitudes towards leopard by local li livestock owners. However, the latest conservation measure in favor of the Arabian leopard was actually last year in August 2021, when Oman established four Khirfot here in west of Dovar in the wilaya between Rakhiyut and Talkut, when this area was established um, uh, as a nature reserve. The reserve contains some of the most important habitats for the Arabian leopard in Western Dovar. And we hope that having this area as a nature reserve will help leopard conservation in the region. Leopard field research started when the leopard conservation program launched in 1997 actually in Jabal Samhan. And then later on in 2000, 2001, the work is extended west to include the green mountains of Dufar, especially Jabal Qar and Jabal Qamar, also, and also the Najd region to the south of the, of the Dufar mountains. The elusive life and secret of life of the Arabian leopard makes it difficult to study these, these animals directly. So the only way to study them is uh, through surfing, for their uh, science and also camera trapping. Picture here, some of actually my uh, colleague and advisor, Andres Bolton, pictures, one of his early pictures 
of a leopard footprint in uh, Jabal Zamhan. Camera traps actually provides more reliable data and can, we can leave these cameras for a long time in the mountains, up to three to six months, and they recording very uh, useful data for us regarding leopard conservation, whether it's uh, presence, absence, or behavior, or even the numbers of leopards. And uh, over the years, we have maybe putting over 300 camera traps across the mountains over the last 10 years. We also used satellite colors to study the movement and home range of uh, the Arabian leopard in the Dufar Mountains. Here is a picture of uh, Dr. Andrew Bolton actually uh, holding one of the colored leopard in Jabal Zamhan, or actually, no, actually in Jabal Qamar, this one, in 2002. We also, as I said, like these animals, it's really difficult to study them directly. So we're only using uh, in non-invasive and indirect ways to study and document their life and understand about their ecology in the Dufar Mountains. So we're also using uh, fecal samples or scats that, that left by leopard in the mountains to look at their diet and also to study their genetic diversity, population structure, gene flow, and also even the number of leopards from these small samples like fecal samples, we can gather a lot of information regarding the Arabian leopard. The distribution, leopard distribution in Dufar. In 1997, when the Arabian leopard uh, project is established, little is known about uh, the Arabian leopard and its distribution in the Dufar mountains. Today, after 25 years of field research, we have a better understanding of leopard distribution and its core habitat in Dufar. This green, the green map in front of you here, it shows the current can be found with an area of around 7,000 square kilometer of Dufar. That is about 7% uh, of Dufar's total, total area. This map, like here, which shows also the blue color, it's actually the leopard core habitat. Uh, only 2,000 square kilometer of the total distribution is considered leopard core habitat. The southern slopes of the Far Mountains from Jabal Samhan in the east, all the way to Jabal Qamr and Jabal, uh, Jabal Qar and Jabal, and Jabal Qamr in the west, it's considered the leopard core habitat. Northwards, like to the nation mountains, it's, it's uh, core habitat and the leopard will be more found in these areas. Estimating leopard numbers using camera traps and genetic studies. We used data collected from uh, camera traps and uh, also from genetic studies, DNA extracted from leopard cats, and we estimated the leopard population in Dufar Mountains. Uh, camera traps and the leopard actually has these unique spot buttons. Sorry. Had these unique bu buttons, which actually these buttons uh, it, is, um, it helps us to ide identify in different uh, individual leopards, and uh, each leopard has its unique button. So this picture here of these two leopards, of actually the same leopard, but during different uh, uh, year, year, like for example, this one to the right on the 6th of November two, 2012, and the other one on the left is on 20th of November 2013, and it's actually the same leopard. So these unique buttons provides us an idea about the number of individual leopards that found within the study area or in the Dufar. Also, the data collected from genetic, stud, uh, from genetic studies, also it's more also reliable and gives us more uh, estimates of the, of the number of individuals found within Dufar. Uh, using this data together, we estimated around uh, 51 leopards in the Dufar mountains, especially in the core area. And this uh, estimates actually in agreement with previous studies using camera traps and uh, uh, colors. Uh, so from both this data, we estimated that the Dufar population is uh, stable, at least for the last 30, 40 years. Leopard diet. In understanding the leopard and diet and, what it, uh, and what, it, uh, what species it eats is uh, very important. 
we just used hair structure uh, from leopard remains and compared this with reference refer, reference of hair structure uh, from brace species found within the region, like the ibex, gazelles, and all other brace species that found within the Arabia. Based on these studies, we found that the leopard actually prefers large brace species, like large uh, body brace species, like the ibex and gazelles, but it actually takes more small mammal species, like, like rodents and rock hyrax and small rodents. And I think that's perhaps the, because of the difficulty associated with catching these uh, uh, large mammal species like gazelles and ibex, because that can put the leopard at risk. And therefore, they will choose, if they cannot find the large mammals, they will choose small mammals. Using uh, satellite colors, we were able to get some information about the movement and home range of the Arabian leopard in, uh, in Dofar, especially in Jabal Samhan and Jabal Gamar. The maps here in front of you here shows these uh, green lines, the movement of, uh, these actually yellow lines, the movement of uh, a female leopard in uh, West Dofar mountains, or in Jabal Gamar actually, between nearby Khirfot uh, area. Khirfot area, the one I just mentioned, it's, uh, it's, it, it covers some of these areas here. So this is part of the Khor Khirfot. And actually the reserve, as I said earlier, it contains some of these core important area for leopard. So based on this information from, uh, from um, satellite colors, we were, uh, like the data actually shows that the male leopard that we uh, caught in Jabal Samhan had a large home range than the female caught in Jabal Gamar. And also looking at the, the female, this female here in Jabal Gamar during different seasons, during the winter and the Kharif uh, season, we found out that the, the female actually had a larger home range during the winter time compared with the monsoon season. But the leopard, the female leopard was more active day and night during the monsoon than during the winter. So in the winter, it's actually more active during the night time. And perhaps that's to avoid the human settlements and the activity of human and people moving throughout the mountains. But in the Kharif, when some of the, these local people move to the Najd area or to the Qatan area, especially to avoid the rain of the monsoon, these animals, they used the, um, the fog and mist by, that provided by the, by the monsoon rain to move around and, uh, find, and also cover, to move between different regions. And I think that also uh, answers some of the, uh, of the questions or comments that raised three, uh, in the last uh, two or three years by the Dovari people in Oman, who keep or keeping like seeing leopards and photographing leopards by their mobile phones. And they claim that the leopard is actually, population is increasing, but it's actually that because the leopard enjoys the monsoon and benefits from the monsoon season. And therefore they will move uh, and more active during this season, benefiting from it. And that's why local people keep seeing them uh, in the on the roads or also near some of the settlements. So, uh, so that's, it's not actually like a new phenomenon that we have to be studied, but actually this is part of the natural history, like a natural history of the Arabian leopard and its natural ecology. Level of genetic diversity in leopard subspecies. As I said at the beginning of the talk, we actually collected comprehensive samples from across the region to look at the evolutionary history, genetic diversity, population structure, and gene flow of the Arabian leopards in the region with special focus on the wild population of the far. From this, uh, uh, this study, we find out that the Arabian leopard actually have a low level of genetic diversity in comparison to other leopard subspecies. But we found that the leopards uh, in captivity or those coming from Yemen actually have more genetic diversity than the Dufar population. Perhaps this because of the leopards of coming from Yemen coming from a larger population and therefore have more genetic diversity compared to the Dufar population, what, what comes from a smaller population size. We also find that the captivity actually hosts some of captive breeding centers across the region, especially in UAE, Saudi Arabia, and uh, Yemen, hosts some very unique uh, uh, allele or some uh, unique genes that should be conserved 
for future reintroduction of the Arabian leopard. Also looking at the genetic diversity of the Arabian leopard, or using the same samples, we found out that the Dufar population, it shows the Dufar population is actually not, uh, there is a low level of gene flow between the Dufar, uh, the leopards of the different mountain re uh, regions. For example, the leopards of, uh, there is no gene flow between the leopards of Jabal Qamar or Jabal Samhan, or the leopards of Jabal Qara and Jabal Qamar. But what is interesting, we found that there is some gene flow between the leopards of West Jabal Qara, which is west of Salala, and the le just before Maxil, and the leopards of the Najd. So the area nearby Maxil, these mountains behind the Maxil, it shows that they are providing a corridor for the Arabian leopards, especially between West Jabal Qara and the Najd area. And therefore, this area actually should be conserved as an important corridor for the Arabian leopard. This area at the moment is facing a lot of threats, especially from coring and mining. And uh, I think uh, uh, the environment um, concerned authorities in Oman should protect that area for not just the leopard, but also for other uh, mammal species that can benefit from corridors. Because if you, if you conserve that area for, uh, for Arabian leopard, it's other leopard, other mammal species, will, which also they're suffering from similar things, similar level, low level of genetic diversity, will benefit from it, especially when animals can move between the Najd and Jabal Qara or the Najd and Jabal Ghamar. And uh, a special, uh, 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 this area should be really conserved for future uh, to protect the Arabian leopard. So I don't want to talk too long, but I want to conclude here and say Oman has taken very important, uh, important measures to conserve its leopard. But as you say, as you see, the Oman, the population remains very small and the risk of extinction remains uh, high. Therefore, more work is needed to ensure the long-term survival of the leopard subspecies in the Dufar Mountains. The Arabian leopard is a flagship species and its persistence in the Dufar Mountains is of great environmental and cultural benefit to the land, Arabian landscape and to its people. We therefore must protect it and find effective ways of coexistence between the leopard and the local communities that live alongside the Arabian leopards in the mountains. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Dr. Hadi. Uh, for the interesting lecture 